Good evening. Welcome to a Dota 2 match between the Tough Bananas and Gamers League. It is a match for 4 PL Cup number 11. It is a match in round number 4, if I am correct, because round number 5 and 6 have to wait until round number 4s are done. At least that's what I've been told. And uh, we are joined here by a Doc, who is going to be my co-caster for this match. Welcome. Hey, thanks for the intro. Um, yeah, so we re remake this like three times already, so it's... It's getting a little bit uh, repetitive, but that's okay. Uh, TTB, a really awesome team at the moment. Uh, I've casted some of their games yesterday, and it was just absolutely spectacular. And they're doing really well in this tournament as well. That's why they're in the fourth round, obviously. Um, they're against Gamers League, so you know you know uh, about Gamers League? Yeah, they are a Norwegian team, and they, uh, they have been performing well as well. And obviously, they are also in the fourth round, so... Have also beaten some teams to get here. They are playing with two stand-ins. Uh, Nola Hacks and SM Bank are, if I recall correctly, stand-ins. But at the same time, I do see Atsi in the Tough Bananas. I do believe he is a stand-in as well. And uh, we have a draft going on. And the reason you're not hearing the sound from the draft is because I have muted my co-caster's microphone in game, which means that automatically, apparently, you're also muting the lady that speaks out the names and the, the heroes that you can hear. So that's a slow, slight glitch that is in Dota 2 at the moment. Uh, we have got a fast draft already. We've got a Morphling Ban, as well as a Rubik Darkseer, Lone Druid, Lycan, and Naga Siren coming off from both teams, with a Chen and a Lashrak first to pick up for the Tough Bananas, and the Nature's Prophet to pick up first for Gamers League, as they're now thinking about the next pick, which could, for example, be something like a Tidehunter, and an enchantress if they want to go for jungle hero. Also want to put nature's prophet in a jungle, I guess. What do you reckon they're gonna pick up? Um well actually right now I think TA would be a pretty good or actually anti major as well. Just pick up some of the solo carries. <clears throat> TA in this case currently Leshrac and Chan don't really have any escape mechanisms so TA would actually be a perfect candidate to be able to slide them off uh in game. So I think that would that'll be a fairly valid target. Then we'll have anyone uh at mid chosen yet for the dire side so I guess they're gonna save it and see what uh, the dire side has in mind because invoker is still there so they might want to see the invoker through first and then pay the TA to kind of counter that solo mid because as you know TA is a very very strong uh, counter laner to the invoker. The invoker can't really harass the TA and the TA uh, in return can actually outlast at the invoker as well. With the anti mage in this case uh, that might spring up a vo uh, faces void being picked as a counter uh, or not really a counter, but as the uh, the counterpart to the anti mage as the uh, carry in this case. Uh, but we might be seeing something else instead. Beastmaster is picked. There's going to be a lot of stuns coming from the dire side. The Beastmaster and Lestrak is going to open up to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, perma stunning going on. All they got to do is just get some other stuns, and it's just going to be uh, absolutely ridiculous. And Nigma in this case. Uh, looks as if he is going to be jungler. Nature's Prophet going to be going top, and then anti mage going bottom uh, with a single support. Not not the not a, not a bad choice, I'm going to say, because uh, they, there's still a lot of uh, supports that can be chosen at this at the moment. Uh, Tide's still out there. Uh, Venomancer would be a good one. Oh, Venomancer is gone now. Unfortunately, Rubik's not there to kind of support that. Uh, there's also CM, which we have seen a few games already. Even though it has been a hero that's been falling out of favor, uh, just simply because she is just way too weak and it's way too easy to be picked off, uh, like such as by the Lashrak. But the tide is definitely out there to be uh, to be picked right now. Uh, what do you what do you think about the uh, the next two heroes? I think that, uh, indeed, up. like you said, Tide Hunter would be a good pickup still for the Dire side, but at the same time, we know that the Chen is going to be in the jungle. I don't think Lashrak is going to be soloing, so I do think that Lashrak will be probably with the Chaos Knight and then another solo lane being picked up there by the Dire. With the TA still in the game, that could be a possibility, so I do think Chaos Knight and TA would be good for the Dire side. As for the Radiant side, Enigma was indeed picked up as I expected, who is going to be going to the jungle. Evoker, as you said, as well, picked up by the Radiant side a bit later than we expected, but still picked up nonetheless with Nature's Prophet soloing, Evoker soloing, they just need a support, and they have two supports banned out, they don't have to be afraid that the Dire team is going to be going for another support, they are uh, going to go for the TA, as I said, he is going to be going into the mid versus that Invoker, and we will see a support being picked up, Crystal Main still in, as well as the Witch Doctor we saw in a previous game, might be able to, uh, to help out here, uh, but of course, I mean, 
there, there are a lot of uh, heroes that can potentially support this anti mage on the lane, even uh, without uh, Venomancer and the Shadow Demon there, because they, of course, be are burnt out by that dire team. I'm wondering though if they're indeed going to go for the, for this, for the Chaos Knight as I expect, which could be, it could be good. I mean, four seconds stun up on the anti mage is just something that you want to have. Yeah, it, it could definitely be there. Uh, Void will be another good candidate, but unfortunately, in Void would not really work that well with their lineup, simply because there's not too too much range in uh, fr from this team. So Void would actually be a, a little bit counterintuitive for the Templar Assassin and the Beastmaster in this case. And same with Lestrac, actually, because Lestrac needs to get up there to you be for his spells to be fully effective. So Void, in this case, would not be a that good of a choice. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely putting my money on CK at the moment. That's going to be their next uh, next pick. Disruptor is going to be supporting the anti mage in at bottom most likely. Um, Disruptor is not my favorite hero to be as a support because he his spells are more used towards killing heroes of more of offensive like Lashrak. And as an anti mage, though, you need someone to be babysitting to be uh, babysitting him. So uh, Disruptor is. Other than like harassing, he can't really be keeping the anti mage alive. And anti mage was if he's if there's enough force uh, on the enemy team to harass him, then he's gonna get harassed. And disruptor is not gonna be able to fight at too many kills. And oh my goodness, it's gonna be a Ricky to counter that AM. I think. Well, I think this case would actually be fairly nice because they do have ten card assassin slow ward and a number of slows or I mean stuns coming from the dire side, so that could actually help quite a bit, and just ensuring that the anti mage gets completely shut down under the cloud, that'll be really nice. So, uh, but Ricky is one of those heroes that does not really scale that well into late game, and he absolutely needs to stay kind of uh, invis at all times, and if the gem can counter him fairly fairly hard as well. So his his support, or his teammates, his teammate supports are going to have to, like, uh, support him, uh, or make sure that he lives in, in, in battles. And they it is possible with the Chen because Chen gets a fast uh gets fast back and with the hand of God, double heal should be able to should be able to do it. So I think this is a fairly fairly good uh lineup. Indeed it is. Uh let's just go over who's playing what. I'll uh, jump over the radio to the dire side rather as I'm already following the Shrek who will be played by Atsi on this top lane. Followed by Balsam who will be uh, playing the Ricky. So that will be a semi trilan here with Calculus on his Chen in the jungle. Uh, in the mid lane, we'll see the Nino on his Templar Assassin. In the bottom lane, we'll see the Beast Mouse. So no surprise there. And that will be played by Ryze. And he will be uh, trying to stack the camp. As we already see a lot of blinks out from Fails, making sure that there's going to be either a ward there from uh, near. Yeah, there's a ward. Making sure that there's not going to be any Ancients uh, that are being stacked there. And I'll leave uh, Gamers League on the Radiant side to you. Uh, now, looking at the Radiant side, we're going to have Fury on. That's going to be soloing top. You see this in most in, in most cases now for uh, Furions. Uh, it's going to be played by Not Hacks. Uh, Enigma is going to be played by Geo uh, Quicks. He's uh, going to be jungling in this case. Uh, Invoker is going to be played by SM Bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anti Mage is going to be played by Failets. Failets. And uh, Thrall, aka a Disruptor, is going to be played by. Oh man, I can't see that. It's it's too bright. It's too it's, blue. Yeah, and Neary. Neary. Indeed it is. I have uh, blue names sometimes mess me up as well. As, as well as purple, actually. If you see some, if it's nighttime and something is dominating, you don't really see the dominating. That is yeah. a, always a bit annoying, as we're going to see already. Beastmaster scouting out the Disruptor in the jungle. Actually, Beastmaster does not have any wards here on this line. He has to be very careful. And I know that he is counting on having some solid farm regardless with that farm that he is going to get hopefully for him uh, from the Ancients, but there is a ward there, and he doesn't know that yet, and he's going to find that out and be very sad about that and having to buy a counter ward, which he doesn't have the gold yet for. So I'm curious to see uh, <laughs> how he's going to respond, and when he's going to find out, obviously, as well. Uh, apparently, maybe only when he's level 2, when he has that uh, Call of the Wild. He actually hasn't spec anything yet. There we go, Axis. So when he's indeed level 2, when he has a Call of the Wild, he can start with stacking that, or, you know, attempting to, because there's, of course, nothing there right now. Temporal Assassin will be up for his uh, Invoker, and uh, that will be, uh, the last lane will be indeed Nature's Prophet for his uh, semi trial and I do, don't think that Nature's Prophet is going to be getting that much done here. Balsam, on the other hand, will be getting some free farm. Same thing goes for the anti mage though. It will be anti mage versus Ricky who will be getting more farm. 
Yeah, but in this case, um, the Beast Master is going to have to stay back. He can only uh, get some... Uh, He's going to be able to get some experience, but he's not going to be able to get any last hits because the Disruptor is going to be there to, ready to gank him. And anti Mage just uh, being a melee hero on against a melee, he's going to be able to burn a lot of mana. So the only thing that the Beast Rider can do is just kind of stay in creep range, poke his head out, and get some XP. That's it. Whereas at top, it is the Furion that's going to be already disrupting the creep. Uh, the creeps um, so so easily. Oh, actually, Chenu to stop, do a really nice job stopping it. But regardless, the creep is pulled. There's already three waves of creeps stacking on that. Pharaoh is going to be getting a lot of farm. But instead, I think what they're going to do uh, for the radi or for the dire side is actually going to be making this and turning this into a push, which is a definitely uh, the most logical way. Um, don't let all those creeps go to waste. Obviously, there's the pings uh, coming from the but So that yeah, watch out. This is uh, fear. I gotta be careful. Because, yeah, he actually is only at level 1 right now. Here's This is his, like, first uh, wave of creeps that he's getting. Yeah, he's not able to get it because all of it is going to be wasted on tower. And uh, he, he can't even get any near it. That's going to be a very, very fast tower. That Yeah, that tower, is, that tower is gone. There's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, and that fortification has already popped as well, but that didn't uh, do anything. And they are just going to continue pushing, and as you said, there is a massive creep wave. This Troll Warlord is actually an amazing creep to have when you do this, because he can just create those little Skeleton Warriors every time again. You see four now. Of course, two are going to be disappearing. But Skeleton Warriors, I mean, you might notice it in Pop as well. Uh, skeleton Warriors do a lot of damage. They might be very squishy. They might die in one hit, uh, two hits rather. But if they have the chance to, to hit you, then they hit hard. And then we see Belson being harassed here by uh, the tower, but he'll just blink to uh, creep, just to clear out the creep wave so they can continue pushing, because that is exactly what they do. And there will be two towers down on the side of the Radiant, going towards the Dire. And this can be considered both positive and negative. I mean, you can consider this to uh, to be creating some space for the Nature's Prophet, because the next wave that will come in, he will get experience from that, and he won't you won't be able to stop him from getting experience, and it will give some ex uh, some less space to Ricky. Of course, he is already level four, and when he is level six, he won't be needing that lane that much anymore. But uh, actually, never mind. They're just gonna continue going to the tier three. In the meantime, though, the first blood has been spilled with the uh, quiz coming out of the jungle. Disruptor being there as well. And the TA goes down, but the push on the bottom lane is where we're at because it's just continuing, and if nobody comes to stop it. Uh, which they are now, by the way. Invoker kind of coming from the side with Enigma there, level 4, Disruptor level 3. I'm not sure what they can do here, though. Uh, they will. They can lock Ricky into a uh, Sprout, who will be sent back home <laughs> there, blinking on, uh, on the <coughs> track who goes down so fast. Invoker picking it up. Chen on the run. But Ricky is the one they... Uh, Ricky is the one they wanted. I mean, Chen will probably die here, uh, regardless, trying to uh, to juke it out slightly. But you know what? He's just going to go down. Nature's probably picking that up. And they did do half of the damage of the tower, and that one is not regenerating. It's just the barracks that do that. It is three kills in favor of Gamers League. Uh, sorry, of uh, Tough Bananas. But, uh, yeah, no, but of Gamers League, that is. But oh. Tough Bananas are uh, very much ahead. On gold. Yeah, but unfortunately, because they, it is the tier three tower, it is going to be a long way for those creeps to be pushing over. And as you said, it's it's going to be much harder for this uh, lane to kind of uh, have heroes in it because if they try to push us again, they're like the enemy team is going to have a lot of time to see it coming, and they'll they'll be prepared this time because uh, this time they weren't really prepared. It was still in the laning phase, but we're we're cutting to close to the six minute mark. It's going to become I call it the ganking season, and then. And then after that, it's it's not going to be as easy to push down. They need to get uh, at least a few heroes down before they can attempt to push once again. And besides, there's much better targets to go for instead. They got other uh, T1 towers that they can push down. Um, TA currently still hasn't really been doing that much. Um, <clears throat> still farming at mid. Uh, she got killed once, though, so that was uh, kind of unfortunate. As for Beastmaster at bottom, he definitely needs a lot of time to uh, to catch up as well, having been completely completely oppressed in this lane, not really able to do too much. Whereas Anti Mage already sitting at 1600 gold is going to be get be able to get his perseverance and then start uh, start working towards his B Fury in this case. But he might need to get Vanguards into Trez instead to help out his team because the team uh, the other team is going to be pushing. Or at least pressuring <clears throat> quite hard in their in, with their lineup, and now another smoke coming in. This smoke is going to be towards mid. That's, there's also invis right there. Going to grab it just for good measure. They should be giving it to the TA, but it doesn't matter. They're going to be ganking the invoker this time. Invoker 
it did go through the Wex Quads build, so he does he does have uh, that thing, uh, the Ghost Walk on demand. There's a splitter, it is, it is gonna hit. Here comes the stun, it's gonna be another stun. No, lays the ward, very nicely done, uh, but that ward is gonna be dead. But that doesn't matter, they use a ward to take out the Invoker, it's totally worth it. And now they're gonna transition this into a mid push, and that mid tower is gonna go down so, so quickly. Yeah, and the Shrek and Chen, it is a pushing team, and they are just gonna continue going, and I do believe that they will be going to the tier 2 as well, if Gamers League let them because they if they start coming uh, towards that and defend it, they might not uh, be so uh, well so lucky to be able to push through. We do see this Raptor though; he's by himself so far defending. They look at that melt damage going through. Glimpse got back, so that TA gets back towards the tower, but the tower will still drop, and TA will still pick up the gold. 1K gold up on on top of already having face boots, on top of already being in the top three of the last hits. 33 for 4 she is right now, and of course the Radiant side has the Entomace to bank on, who is now also pushing slightly, because this Beastmaster can't do that much yet, he's even not level 6 yet, so no roar for him just yet, but he is on 50 for 19, and that is insane for an Entomace, or insane, that's not that insane, it's good for an Entomace at this time. Yeah, as you can see, he's still saving up his gold, not really sure what to buy at the moment, in fact, he can also even get a Midas, just um, because it's still fairly early in the game at the moment and uh, they're not doing that bad uh, oh very nicely dodged uh, on that Blake there and tree just to prevent the enemy from coming over um, at bottom Ricky Maru just kind of doing his own thing is gonna try to kill the kill the uh, destructor in this case but gets sent back instead doesn't even get hit by the EMP but that's just for preventive measures that's gonna keep the Ricky Maru from going back but in this lane though it is very dangerous because any hero you can see that goes out of this lane at top, uh, Ricky Morrow is going to be able to just kind of get some free shots. He's already got a Blade of Alacrity on top of his Tranquil Boost, so he's moving very, very quickly. If he gets an Orb of Venom, which in a lot of pub builds, um, that is the case, and he gets a lot of free shots, and the slow just makes people stay in that lane much, much longer. And now, look at Ricky, he's going to find another person, he's going to find the... Uh, Fear on this case, and now the TA coming in. She's got a haste rune as well. There is just going to be so much damage. Can he bring it down in time? Yes. They don't even need to use the cloud to to prevent. Or actually, no. What am I saying? He didn't. He didn't try to out. He tried. Uh, he used the actual town portal, a uh, scroll town portal to TP out, so you couldn't even disrupt it anyways. Now AT Mage gets stunned! Oh man, he is gonna go down. That was a chain stun coming from the Beastmaster plus Lestrak. Very nicely done. Now gonna be able to push, uh, make a push towards bottom. Yeah, and they don't have a Chen with them, but they don't really need it. Lestrak's Edict is already level 3, and they will be able to push this tower. And even if they don't have the Creep Wave, Templar Assassin will be able to sync it up with a Refraction, so... Now they're just waiting for that quick wave there. The hand of wave going through because Chen is in a lot of trouble. We'll be able to stay alive with that hand of God going through that. And actually quite surprised that he managed to stay alive versus a team that had three heroes there to take him down. Tier 1 tower drops on the bottom lane. Chen is alive, able to defend his own tier 1 tower. So only one tower down so far on the side of the dire with a lot of towers down, four towers down on the side of the Radiant, and that is looking painful. Beastmaster though, I mean, he's just got used on the Antimage, we'll see him trying to use it, use it more, he only is level 6, 6 for a while now. Uh, and he has not been able to pick up the Ancients, he just gave up, he didn't even try to counter it. There is actually a second ward that had been placed to deal with that, uh, but he doesn't care, he'll get gold from the towers anyway, which is normally the gold that you want to uh, bank off for your supports and stuff, but Beastmaster will make good use of that as well. Picked up his Dracul boost as well, and look at that, they are just getting ready for another push. They have Calculus, they have Adsen, a TP is actually going to go from the TA, who wants to get so far from this top lane, push the lane back. We have a nice drawing coming out from the Invoker indicating where they are. Uh, there is a dire war, so if someone is around there, they will be able to see it unless they smoked up. We'll see if they're going to go for that, though they did smoke up, so that might be, there might be some action incoming right here. Smoke up. Oh, hello, Jen! That is uh, not where you want to be, Jen. There is the EMP tornado. Nature Prophet TPing it as well, and Calculus is going to drop here very fast. In the meantime, it is going to be the courier. What is the courier doing here? Courier is going to actually go down. There we go. Extra gold for you. And Beastmaster gonna try to get away. He still has a roar, but he doesn't really want to use it right now. He might be going down, even though he's the well, of course not there. Yeah, he probably is gonna go down. If Felt is gonna continue attacking, making good. Ah, uh, surprising. Felt doesn't have any boots. That's it. Yeah, the Enigma was not able to catch up in time, but here comes the Chen Creeps. Even more feeding going on. 
oh man, these chest creeps are pretty much dead, just using Blink to take him out. Ricky Morrow, unfortunately, wasn't able to do anything there because there was nothing to hold him still. But he starts just turning around, was not able to get the roar off in time. Uh, it was just it was just a, a quick reaction coming from both teams because they did not expect to kind of beat in that kind of position. Neither team was really prepared. And now Radiant, or Dire, excuse me, is going to... Uh, make, make a sto smoke yank attempt because the beast master drawer is still up. They're gonna try to find oh, someone here, Black but they can't Hall, find anyone. No, Ricky. they're gonna find the Ricky Morrow who's gonna go down very, very easily. And now uh, the TA is coming from behind as well. <gasps> actually, is going to get glimpsed out. That, that saves her life. Down. That so saves her life. She was surrounded yeah. by four heroes. She was dusted. She is dusted. And uh, so dusted. So she's like, oh crap, need to run. Yeah, but she has a blink, so I was able to run. But that glimpse just definitely saved your life. Slight misplay from that disruptor, as he's probably a bit disappointed that he uh, that he did that. But of course, he figured maybe more people are coming in, in which case it's a good way, good thing to have the TA out of the way. But then there were no more, no more people, so uh, kill got uh, got lost. Beastmaster in the meantime gonna be coming in on the top lane as they are looking to maybe push in there. We do not just have the Beastmaster, but the Shrek is on his way as well as the TA. Axis will fly through. If Beastmaster can get a roar off here. They might be able to kill him, but we do see Gamers League just hiding in their base, knowing that something might come. Having seen the axes, knowing that Beastmaster is there, and they will be able to, uh, to well, be careful enough, of course. Anti-Mage feels like he is safe enough, because he is, of course, the Anti-Mage. He can't blink away. He's almost got his Battle Fury complete. That will be a big help for him, as he'll finally be able to buy some boots as well. But uh, until then, he's, uh, he's not farming as fast as uh, you might want him to. 12 minutes in, 70 last hits, it's not insanely much if you're having free farm, as in, I believe it's 82 last hits at 10 minutes, that is the maximum, and we're now 13 minutes in, it's not yet at that point, so that's the difference right there, but we'll uh, put up the net worth instead, so that we see that the TA and the Ricky are the ones on top of that gold chart, and to me it's not far behind though. Yeah, and to me it's not do consider that Battle Fury is a 4K item. People think that Battle Fury should be easily farmed, but it's 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 really not. It's it's a huge investment for Anti Mage, and then even after that, um, he's still he's still made a paper. He still needs to get his next item in order to actually be involved in team fights. So he's got a long way to go. He's just about to get his Battle Fury right about now. And since uh, <clears throat> since the Dire team kind of spent some time camping him out, they're not they're not going to waste any more time. They're going to have to find another tower to push down. Or at least get the TA to get his her, get her next item, which uh, well in this case could be a BKB, could could be a Desolator, um, depending on how she wants to deal with the enemy team stuns. Um, there is quite a bit. There is the uh, the disruptors on uh, things that can be uh, that doesn't really go through BKB except for the uh, Static Storm. Uh, Enigma's Black Hole is something to consider as well. Invoker's number of spells can uh, doesn't really go through BKB. So there's a number of things that can go through BKB, but at the same time, uh, not. Uh, it's it will be good to get one. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Roshan, we already seen that went down. That was a really easy Roshan thanks to TA's uh, minus armor. And now TA is going to look for blood, trying to find someone, but she's a little bit out of position herself. Now trying to lead in. Now in, oh, Ricky Maru jumping in. Probably not a good idea that there's going to be... Oh, man, uh, Enigma get, does get pulled out, but now Enigma is, Mako is not up yet. He's getting completely focused down uh, only by the beast right but goes out regardless. Uh, and um, I think that was... Someone got sent back? No, I don't, I don't know what's going on at the moment. Uh, Invoker blow up his combo once again. That's going to drain the entire mana from Little Shrek and TAT is going to try to um, heal back at the moment. Uh, and Team H still extremely weak. This is where what I'm talking about. He doesn't have anything to actually go for. He doesn't even have boots. going to get cut around. TA now going in. It's going to kill the um, Invoker. Now uh, anti is going to be forced to back up, and now they can transition this into a push at bottom. But unfortunately, the creeps are a little bit uh, far from the tower movement, so they can't really go on it just yet. But they're they're definitely going to work on it. Yeah, and that was a three for zero in favor of the Dire team, and that actually got the kill score back in favor of them. I mean, they they took the Roshan. They, we saw the Radiant team waiting, thinking they could maybe go in, but they were slightly too late, and then they thought they could still take a team fight, but just not able to do that, and Enigma already dead before he was able to put off a black hole, because that black hole might have changed everything around, but they just were out of position, the retreat was not fast enough, and that was just uh, a good fight for the top bananas for sure, and Games League will 
continue to farm and they they were lucky that anti mage didn't die. He still doesn't have boost, doesn't have battle fury, even though normally when an anti mage has battle fury you kinda want him to have those threats because he needs that extra attack damage or ex extra attack speed I should say. Uh to actually make good use of that battle fury. He does have a poor machine of course. Oh blink in from the TA but blink out from the anti mage. That's uh, multiple blinks for you. And the TA will make sure this is my lane. Don't farm here. This is only my domain. Meantime, bottom lane, we see Invoker being forced out as well. Uh, this time by uh, the Ricky who gets a tornado EMP, burns away some of his mana. But then again, he doesn't really need his mana, and his spells aren't that mana intensive, so he is okay with that. And that is two lanes that are now claimed by the dire side to farm up on, and the top lane is also for the dire side, so what we see is that the radiant side is a bit locked in. They can't really farm anywhere. We do see Antimage farming his own jungle, which is good, but if you look at his own jungle, Lushrak is in there, Ricky is in there, there's no real safe place. Top lane in the meantime, Nature's Prophet, I'm not sure what he was doing there, but he is dead. And it is Ricky that uh, uh, TP'd in to get the last hit. He was able to TP to the tower that disappeared straight after, uh, with the Nature's Prophet still being able to pick that tower up, so now two towers down on the side of the dire, but I'm not sure if that's worth dying for. Yeah, Nature's Prophet was actually trying to backdoor because the tower was in deny range. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Dire team kind of screwed up by not having any hero working on that tower, which was worked down by Treants. And so, Nature's Prophet was still worth it uh, by going down in that, uh, by going down in that exchange because he did manage to get the tower kill for his team, and that's definitely going to work towards uh, the anti mage getting better, getting uh, catching up in his farm pretty much, getting his next item, which he is going to be able to get his treads and then into Manta as uh, most anti mage would do. Um, Disruptor needs to uh, work towards his items. He doesn't, he doesn't have anything at the moment. The four staff will probably be his luxury item at the moment. Just mass four staffs on the <clears throat> on the radiant side to make sure that uh, whoever gets gets uh, clouded. And just uh, force half him out. That's uh, that's the best uh, and easiest solution to it, right? Mm -hmm. It is indeed. And we do see Ricky building towards the death lane, I believe, with picking up the Minter Hammer first. So that would be a nice item to have. <laughs> we saw Antimus being very frightened in his own jungle. Uh, he uh, saw Axis fly, even though the roar was uh, not on cool, not off cooldown. He blinked and he TP'd out straight after, not risking his life. He really is the only hope. But still, Ricky takes down the Antimus on the top lane. There was no hope there. And he was by himself. This was a one versus one. I'm quite surprised that Ricky was able to do that, and Antimage wasn't able to blink away from that. I mean, he was on full HP as well. Yeah, that's just the power of Ricky Morrow with backstab, purse stick under the <clears throat> under the cloud. Antimage has tried to run out, but he was so close he didn't really make it. Beastmaster picking up easy kill on the Nature's Prophet Admin, which is trying to get a kill. Oh, Tower gets denied. Very nicely done. There is just so many summons. This is the Fury on Pult's Friends build with that. Um, now, at bottom, and that tower is getting worked on as well. They're going to be forced back up because they have no more creeps. Mech has already been popped. Uh, they're going to try to fight this out because, uh, well, Beastmaster doesn't have Roar at the moment. And Ricky Maru is going to be coming over. He's actually going to go from the backside. This is good because now he can, th he can find whoever is going to be in the jungle, and it's going to be anti mage once again, gets purged once again, even using a slow word help out, but Tornado going to save him, he's going to blink out, no, he gets blink strike before he can manage to blink out, and so that's another easy pick off for the, for the dire side, and now with that, with anti mage out of the picture, they can, uh, they can look into pushing that to bottom tower once again. Yeah, and they uh, they are gonna indeed do that. It was actually, by the way, the second time that Nature's Prophet died for uh, for a tower. Uh, he dies again in the middle lane now that Balsam is uh, finding him alone. And really, you do not want to find this Ricky by himself right now because he will kill you. And look at his net worth is just spiking, still highest up on there. In the meantime, bottom lane uh, needs the hand of God apparently to help uh, kill off the tower. Tower is already dead, and they're not backing off either. They're just gonna continue going. They don't have to deal with an anti mage just yet. They don't have to deal with the Nature's Prophet. And and actually they go to the middle lane. Last year two towers still standing. Balsam getting uh, frostbitten. Pops the ward. Roar going off on the Enigma. No black hole for you. Uh, Ricky would be sent home but will die before anything else because he got a mana void in the face. Anti-Mage might regret that though. Blinks away. Can't do anything here anymore. Disruptor hides in his base. Kinetic field locks the Templar assassin in and will make sure she was a she's able to blink away. We do have Lashrak still going down to the Invoker. Definitely Blast still going through as well. But it is uh, one for one. Well Ricky bought back actually and is back on the top lane farming already as we see the tier 2 tower still being attempted. That is what they came for. That is what Gamers League uh, are probably gonna lose regardless. Even if they kill off this TA, they try though, but TA will be sent home again. 
Well, again, we'll be sent home regardless. Antimage on the chase wants to get the Beastmaster. Beastmaster is out of mana, no mana void because it's on cooldown just yet. And the boots are. Is it enough? He's still getting slow so much. Another trap, 50% slow. Blink here from the TA. Hello, Antimage. I'm not sure you want to be here right now. Doesn't have a blink yet. Goes down. TA picking up the kill. Nature's probably going to try to TP out and won't be able to do so because the blink strike is just too much. This Balsam is just out of control. And they might have killed him off earlier. I'm not sure they're going to be able to do it again anytime soon. And that's all tier 1 yeah, towers was and tier 2 towers. Yeah, that was definitely a little bit of a... Uh, that was definitely an overextension coming from the dire side. Or radiant side, excuse me. Um, they got some kills, and then they figured, oh, hey, I'm an anti so I'm going to keep on chasing. But they didn't take into account the fact that Ricky was back, TA wasn't really dead, and now the Ricky Bar, yeah, got to be careful. Uh, there is still Black Hole and Malifies on that Enigma, so he's going to back up. And look at the amount of charges he's already used with that Diffusal Blade. He's gotten a fair amount of kills with it, and he's been using it really, really well. So that's that's a really nice. And the, the best part about Diffusal Blade is that you can... Uh, you can upgrade it, but even after that, uh, you can still sell your Diffusal Blade for uh, half the price. Whereas in Dota 1, your the price of your, or like your worth for your Diffusal Blade is actually based on how many charges you have. So when you have zero charges, it's not worth anything. So you have to like just drop it on the ground and buy, uh, rebuy it. So I think that's one of the main bugs that Ice Rock did not actually fix in Dota 2. Very minor, obviously. Okay, in the meantime, we saw TA being picked off. She was uh, slightly uh, misplaced with, between four heroes. And to me, she was able to pick up the last hit. And uh, you saw the glimpse going back there. As uh, we have another gank being set up. It is Chen that is going to be the bait because he is not smoked up. Uh, Beastmaster and the Shrek are smoked up, though. And, of course, Ricky is invisible by himself. And it's going to be Invoker that's maybe going to get a taste of that first because he is uh, there as well as the Anti-Mage. And uh, they find the Ricky first with the <laughs> invisibility or the Sentry Ward there. He pops his BKB, though, able to buy that with the Mithra Hammer that he had. The Shrek's on, hits on two. Nova, it goes through. Black Hole being cast. It catches two to Chen as well as the Lashrak. Roar going off with the anti in the meantime. Nobody in the black hole got killed off. Enigma is going to be killed off here, though, by the Ricky. Also killed off the Invoker Slave before that. Double kill for him. And the rest of Gamers League is backing off. And I don't blame them because they are not at a good position right now. And the top lane, not a hack, is trying to push, trying to do what he can. He's actually going for more push, going for an Economicon. Has got level 2 right now. And it's going to try to uh, to have that as a solution for this um, Ricky that they can do. Maybe split push. Maybe he's successful. And he has to be really careful. Though. As soon as someone's there, they will be able to pick you up. Templar Assassin is going to go for Desolator right away. Does use that for a Mithra Hammer. And uh, we'll be able to counter push here as well on the top lane with, together with Lashrak. As uh, Ricky is continuing farming and everybody is farming once more. But once again, it is the Radiant side that can't farm at that many locations. Anti-Mage is of course able to farm in the jungle, but their lanes are... If they show themselves on a lane, they, they are, could be pretty much that. They don't have that much wars to see where the Radiant team is, so they're be playing very careful. And even in the jungle, um, Anti-Mage gets uh, get scouted out by Ricky, and he is pretty much dead. Because he doesn't, he doesn't have his... Uh, he doesn't have his magic just yet, so he's not as tanky. He's only got 800 HP. That's why he goes out so quickly. Um, so he definitely needs that magic to have a bit more tankiness. Uh, Roshan is back up, so this is going to be another easy Roshan coming from the dire side. Uh, Tia, I think, is going to be able to t is going to be the one taking it most likely, or it could, they could give it to Ricky because Ricky can pretty much initiate, die, don't care, and uh, get the Aegis. Who's getting it? It's going to be Ta who's going to get it. I mean, either of them can be going in there to to initiate and the other person kind of backing them up by killing whichever is behind the person that's getting initiated upon so it's it's definitely a really nice uh, offensive lineup coming from the dire side and now they see someone uh, or at least no there we go they see someone let found someone he found three of them he's gonna be eating a lot of hits like even mad avoid but he didn't go down oh my god they're forced to back up because they know all the dire team is here and so they're going to back up. They already used a number of spells there. Here comes the chase. TA trying to find someone. Everyone TPing out. All three heroes TPing out. That's okay. They all, um, so no casualties in that exchange. But at, but at this time, the dark side is going to get back right into farming. Whereas anti mage TP back home. Now he's got to walk all the way to mid to get that wave. And then blink over to the creep camps to kind of get something down. Whereas in Ricky Mario has been already been farming. And... He, uh, sooner or later, he's going to meet the uh, anti-major get in the jungle. 
Yep, indeed. And um, I have to say, <laughs> that it was a very lucky little track. Hand of God going through, stick charges going through, and it was enough. I didn't think it might be, but it was indeed enough. And of course, the mana point was just too early because there was barely any mana drain from that little track. And uh, yeah, Antimage, who is, uh, he, he is slowly but steadily building his items up. I mean, he's building towards the mana style that will definitely help. But like you said, as soon as he's in the jungle, he will be. At a disadvantage if it, re if it needs to Ricky, let's put it that way. Uh, Ricky was also going for a man star, by the way. It is gonna be Templar Sesson that picks up a haste run. It's gonna be able to. Oh, I'm not sure. Nature Prophet. Look at him. TP Sin. They think the Chen is alone, but he is not. There's the Tornado EMP. They see the Beastmaster is there. Burns by some of his mana. He still can roar if he wants to. Lashrek Sun. Or does it hit? It will be the Beastmaster that will be sent home. Should be fine. Calculus. It's gonna be. Uh, Trying to get away from this one, the shark being forced back, and Invoker goes down to the TA. In the meantime, but we're following this black hole that picks up the Chen. Enigma goes down to the TA on the back as well, but we're gonna follow <laughs> Fields. This Ricky, as you can't do anything against it, and as four heroes down, they were fighting at two different locations. We had the Ricky on one side at, with the anti mage, we had the Templar Assassin and the Shrek on the other side, and both of those mini fights were won. And they were even won without a roar because he just used it on a creep. Those were four yeah, heroes. Yeah, the special was actually sent back, and yeah, they were fighting this 1v5, yeah. but they did spend a lot, and I mean a lot, of. Uh, hits on the B Smasher and he got sent home so that's like that's why they ran out of steam they couldn't fight again fight against that and then and now uh, Ricky Martin went in there and just pretty much destroyed the entire team now with most of the heroes that they're gonna be able to work on this tower that they got like around the eight minute mark and yep. now here it is here comes the harassment from Invoker actually gotta be careful TA jump in almost already brought him, bring him down to half half HP and now they're gonna continue going on working on this tower or act, work on this rack, excuse me. Uh, here comes the ion, whatever uh, barrier it is. Um, so not really too much of a reaction coming in. Roar goes on, anti mage. Anti mage is gonna go down. Enigma tries to hold something, but not gonna happen. Ricky Mario just pops BGB, gonna try to keep on chasing. That that Virion is gonna protect himself, try to TP out. He's gonna be okay. Ricky Mario, real low HP, goes down to tower hits. This tower actually still intact. They gotta take it down immediately before they back everyone back backing up. Lashrak, there we go. He takes it out. That's what they came for. They got it, and they should just back up now. I mean, yeah. They, I mean, they don't really need to. They, there's only two heroes alive at the moment, so I guess they're going to continue just playing around. Ricky Morrow is dead, though, so they got to be careful. they got to be careful for sure. And Ricky, he, I mean, I have to say, he was kind of overextending it. His own fault that he was dead in that fight. He could have stayed alive, I would believe. Uh, but with all the gold that they just got, Templar Assassin is going to get a Crystalist to... Uh, Get some extra damage, even though she doesn't really need the damage from what we already saw. Uh, but uh, this later is going to be building into a Daedalus uh, later, so or sooner rather than later, actually. Uh, level 3 Necronomicon hasn't really worked out that well for the Mage's Prophet. I mean, he's trying to push, but considering the push that he wants to do and all the tier 2 towers still standing, he is not being successful whatsoever. I mean, the tier 1 towers are dead, and we saw him dying for two of those tier 1 towers. And that is not something that you, you want to see if you go for a, such a Nature Prophet. Nature Prophet is one of those heroes that you normally expect to have a lot of gold as well, but his net worth is not that much. And of course he has died uh, quite a few times. He's died six times in total. But it is uh, it is not his game. It is not his game for sure. We have Invoker, of course. We saw his four staff already. Just going over the items because I think we're kind of letting that uh, part of the game underlighted so to speak. We have Enigma building towards a BKB. He is able to pick up a Miltimer Hammer, but I do think he wants to just save for buyback or get the full BKB at the same time. Disruptor is a bit sad. He has uh, been in 8 kills, only died twice, but has got nothing else but boots and uh, some almost got his uh, magic stick. His magic wand, I should say, but he has of course been warding and counter warding and counter warding that Ricky and counter warding that Ricky some more. And uh, the push continues, this time on the bottom lane, we can't even continue going over items because this bottom lane looks to be uh, pressured here by uh, the Tough Bananas. Yeah, they have uh, pretty much all the heroes at bottom, 
they're pretty much ready. Everything is off cooldown. They actually don't have very long cooldowns anyways. Beast Master is probably their longest uh, next to the Hand of God. That's all they got. Here comes the harassment. The, the Chen Screams are just going to be the front line. That's going to be the ones that are going to go down first. And here comes the Roar. Goes out the Evoker. Evoker goes out immediately. And Nagua coming in, grabbing three heroes. Unfortunately, gets Silas immediately. Goes down as well in one shot from the TA. And now uh, tries to do a defensive ice wall. That's all he can do. And now the, all the dire team got to do is just back up and go on this. But instead, uh, what is Ricky doing? No, he's going to move up for the mech. And just going to work on the racks. Because like if you back up, no problem. We're going to work on your raxes. And that's the second pair of raxes goes down. Oh, and <laughs> Evoker is so close. Tries to get that spill. Almost got that spill kill as well. And... Yeah, this tower, this this racks is done. This lane is down. That's two lanes down. This looks very, very grim for for Gamers League. And indeed it does. They're just going to rotate towards the mid tower because they know that there's nothing that really that Gamers League can do to stop this. Roar going off on the Evoker again. And Evoker down again. That melt damage with that crit being insane. Disruptor is going to try to stay alive and won't be able to do so. It will be Lashrak that picks up the last hit. And these barracks are as good as that. They might still be picking up the Temple or Assassin, which they actually do. But meh, man, Antimage is going to pay for that one. Getting chased back by the rookie. And actually is being forced out of his own base. Well, his own barracks are, uh, yeah. Well, his own <laughs> barracks are gonna be uh, destroyed. The buyback was there for the TA. She will be back into this fight shortly, but I'm not sure if we can call this a fight anymore because the GG has been called. The disconnects are gonna come out, or at least one is, and uh, it will be the tough bananas that will be advancing into uh, round number five. And there goes Antimage TA getting some revenge for uh, ki for uh, killing her off earlier. And that will indeed be a game, a convincing game, I have to say, for Gamers League, for, sorry, for Top Bananas. I don't think that Gamers League had uh, a lot of chances after that Ricky got such an awesome start with those kills and Anti-Mage didn't get such an awesome start. And he was not done farming yet, he could not turn the game around yet. He was not at that point, even though it's 30, 32 minutes in. Uh, not farming fast enough. I just think it's amazing how the Beastmaster, who pretty much had like zero farm, during the early game, but at the moment that he hit level 6, he started going with the team, and he has just been absolutely useful in this game, and he, he, it's just done him, done him wonders, though. And Ricky also managed to pick up some really easy kills, shutting down the AM completely, and it just, uh, it just went uphill for them from there. It was, it was just, uh, like, kill, or, yeah, kills after kills after towers, and then after more, and then more kills. It's... Yep. It was just really smooth for them. Indeed it was. Uh, this was a match for 4PL. Four uh, this was a round number 4 match. We're going to see round number 5 uh, hopefully uh, shortly uh, after this, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, don't go anywhere.